Ergophobia is an extreme and debilitating fear associated with work, employment, or specific workplace tasks. This phobia is not specifically defined in the Standard Diagnostic Manual for Mental Disorders, but can be classified under the category of other specific phobias. The features of ergophobia are often consistent with social phobia or performance anxiety, involving irrational fears related to the work environment. These fears can include failing at assigned tasks, public speaking, socializing with coworkers, or experiencing emotional, psychological, or physical injuries at work. Phobias, in general, are psychological conditions in which an individual has a persistent fear that is disproportionate to the actual threat posed by a situation or object. Phobias can be specific to certain stimuli or general to social situations and are often associated with other mental health disorders. Ergophobia has both physical and psychological symptoms, such as rapid heart rate, dry mouth, excessive sweating, general uneasiness, and panic attacks. It can also cause impairment at work, including difficulty meeting work requirements, keeping a job, or engaging with the workplace. The concept of ergophobia has been controversial, with some dismissing it as laziness in the past. However, it is now considered by some to be a corollary of occupational burnout, which is thought to result from long-term unresolvable job stress. Similar syndromes to ergophobia include generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, and other specified anxiety disorders, all of which can cause distress and anxiety in work-related situations. The changing nature of employer-employee relations in the service-based economy and the use of performance appraisal systems can exacerbate emotional exhaustion among employees, potentially leading to feelings of burnout or ergophobia. A disturbing conspiracy theory has emerged from the depths of the internet, centered around an alleged computer algorithm known as Erratus. According to the theory, this enigmatic algorithm conducts covert data surveillance on anyone who searches for its name online, leaving no trace of its existence. The information gathered by Erratus is purportedly utilized by massive corporations to develop an artificial intelligence capable of distinguishing humans from other entities. Some proponents of the theory suggest that the algorithm's primary purpose is to identify and eliminate instances of copyright infringement on popular video sharing platforms. The origins of this conspiracy can be traced back to an anonymous post on an online message board in 2015. The rabbit hole deepens with the mysterious disappearance of a small-time content creator who delved into the Erratus mystery. Many speculate that this individual was silenced by the powers behind the algorithm for exposing its true nature. Despite numerous theories and investigations, the truth behind Erratus remains elusive. It is unclear whether the algorithm actually exists, or if it is merely an elaborate hoax designed to captivate and unsettle those who stumble upon it. The Esalen Institute, a non-profit retreat center and intentional community nestled in the coastal mountains of California, has played a significant role in the development of humanistic alternative education and the human potential movement. Founded in the early 1960s by two Stanford graduates, the institute quickly became a hub for exploring unconventional ideas and practices related to human consciousness and personal growth. Esselin's founders envisioned a space where individuals could delve into a wide range of philosophies, religious disciplines, and psychological techniques without the constraints of mainstream academia or the dogma often associated with groups centered around a single charismatic leader. The institute attracted a diverse array of influential thinkers, artists, and innovators who led experiential workshops focused on body awareness, sensory education, and emotional expression. The Institute's programs and workshops cover a broad spectrum of topics, from personal growth and spirituality to somatics and ecological sustainability. Esalen has also been at the forefront of research initiatives and educational projects, including the groundbreaking Schizophrenia Research Project conducted at a state hospital. Over the years, Esalen has faced its share of challenges, including devastating natural disasters, leadership changes, and financial strains. Despite these obstacles, the Institute has remained committed to its core mission of exploring human potential and fostering personal and social transformation. 
While Esselin's workshops and accommodations come at a significant cost, the Institute strives to maintain a balance between financial stability and accessibility. The revenue generated from its programs is reinvested into the maintenance and improvement of its facilities, as well as supporting its various research and educational initiatives. Esselin's influence extends far beyond its scenic California campus, as it has played a crucial role in shaping the New Age movement and popularizing ideas and practices that have since become mainstream. The Institute's legacy continues to inspire those seeking personal growth, spiritual awakening, and a deeper understanding of the human experience. The Ethership Mystery refers to a collection of seance memoranda and letters published by a spiritualist organization in the years following World War II. These documents present a unique hypothesis for the origin of flying saucers, suggesting that they originate from a dimension of space-time called Etheria, which exists alongside our own, separated by differences in density or vibration. The primary sources for this theory were channeled spirits of the deceased and psychically received information from Etherian entities themselves. One of the key figures in the development of this idea was a medium who claimed to have made psychic contact with the Aetherians and observed an unusual craft, described as being the size of a large plane with flapping wings and reddish lights. Through seances, a collective of channeled intelligences known as the Inner Circle provided further details about the Aether ships, asserting that they were constructed in Etheria and piloted by Aetherian entities. The inner circle presented themselves as an astral body of discarnate intelligences not directly responsible for the craft's construction or operation. Members of the spiritualist organization offered speculations on the physical laws that might explain the appearance, propulsion, and mechanics of the Aetherian aeroforms, drawing on concepts such as grain and vibrational density. They also received communications from individuals claiming direct contact with Aetherians, who provided additional information about the various types of crafts and the Aetherian realm itself. The Aether ship mystery also includes controversial claims, such as a purported meeting between the US president and Aetherians at a military base, which was disputed by some of the channeled entities. Despite the extraordinary nature of these assertions, the proponents of the Aethership mystery maintained their belief in the interdimensional origin of flying saucers and the existence of Etheria. Designed by an artist with a background in amusement park rides, the Euthanasia Coaster is a hypothetical roller coaster concept that takes the idea of thrill-seeking to its darkest extreme. The coaster's sole purpose is to end the lives of its passengers, serving as a theoretical means of execution or euthanasia. The design begins with a lengthy, steep climb to a height far exceeding that of any existing roller coaster, during which riders would have time to contemplate their lives. At the top, passengers could choose to exit the ride or continue on to their demise. Should they choose to proceed, the coaster would plummet down a vertigo-inducing drop, reaching speeds close to terminal velocity before entering a series of seven increasingly tight inversions. These loops would subject riders to lethal levels of g-force, causing a progression of symptoms from graying of vision to blackout, and ultimately death by cerebral hypoxia, a lack of oxygen to the brain. The concept behind the euthanasia coaster is rooted in the idea of the ultimate roller coaster, one that pushes the limits of what the human body can endure. While the design remains purely hypothetical, it has been featured in art exhibitions exploring themes of life extension and the ethical implications of such technologies. Though undeniably macabre, the euthanasia coaster serves as a thought-provoking artistic statement prompting reflections on mortality, the nature of thrill-seeking, and the potential consequences of pushing the boundaries of human experience to their most extreme conclusions. The expanding Earth theory suggests that our planet has been growing larger over time. According to this idea, Earth started out much smaller millions or billions of years ago. The continents were once joined together on this small Earth, but as the planet grew, the land masses broke apart and spread out to their current positions. Some scientists think this expansion happens as new matter is created deep inside the Earth. 
They propose a mechanism where electrically charged particles from the sun enter the planet's core and are transformed into new material, causing the Earth to swell outwards from the center. Proponents of the expanding Earth have tried to reconstruct what the planet looked like in the distant past based on the ages and positions of rocks on the continents and ocean floor. Their models indicate the Earth may have been around half its current size around 250 million years ago, and maybe only a quarter of its present size billions of years ago during the early stages of the planet's history. They calculate the Earth could currently be growing by around 2 centimeters per year. The expanding Earth concept provides an alternative explanation for how continents moved apart over time, in contrast to the widely accepted theory of plate tectonics. While still quite speculative, it offers a thought-provoking perspective on the dynamic nature of our planet and how it may have evolved over the eons. The phenomenon of animals exploding, while uncommon, can occur through both natural causes and human intervention. Natural explosions in living animals may serve a defensive purpose, while post-mortem explosions, such as those observed in beached whales, result from the buildup of gases produced by bacteria during decomposition. Throughout history, various military attempts have been made to weaponize animals by using them as delivery systems for explosives. These efforts have ranged from oxen carrying explosive charges in ancient China to more recent experiments with bat bombs and kamikaze dolphins during World War II. There have also been documented incidents of donkeys, mules, and horses being used in animal-borne bomb attacks. Some species of ants and termites have the ability to self-destruct through a process called autothysis, rupturing their bodies and releasing noxious chemicals to protect their colonies from intruders. This altruistic behavior occurs at the expense of the individual insect for the benefit of the colony as a whole. In one unusual case, a dairy cow in Australia was reported to have been partially blown up and killed after accidentally triggering a blasting cap it had picked up while grazing. The resulting explosion occurred while the cow was being milked, knocking the farmer unconscious. During World War II, the British Special Operations Executive developed a weapon known as the Explosive Rat. These booby-trapped rat carcasses were filled with plastic explosives and intended to be disposed of by burning, potentially causing boiler explosions in German facilities. A series of toad explosions in Germany prompted investigations into the cause of the bizarre phenomenon. While initial theories suggested viral or fungal infections, a veterinarian proposed that the explosions were the result of a combination of crow attacks and the toad's natural defense mechanism of puffing up their bodies. Extremophiles are organisms thriving in extreme environments, pushing life's boundaries. They endure extreme temperatures, radiation, salinity, or pH levels. While some spores and bacteria remain dormant for long periods, Extremophiles flourish in such conditions, making them abundant life forms. Scientists have found extremophiles in diverse extreme environments, from Antarctica's cold depths to ocean sediments. Their resilience and adaptability stem from unique amino acid compositions affecting protein folding. Extremophiles are categorized based on the extremes they tolerate, like thermophiles, high temperatures, and acidophiles, acidic environments. Some fit into multiple categories, known as polyextremophiles. Astrobiologists study extremophiles to understand life's limits and potential on other planets. Extremophiles' adaptability to space conditions raises questions about life's interplanetary travel. In bioremediation, extremophiles clean polluted sites where traditional methods fail. Some, like piezophiles, tolerate deep sea pressures and metabolize pollutants. Extremophiles contribute to biotechnology with enzymes like TAC-DNA polymerase used in molecular biology for their stability and effectiveness under extreme conditions. Some aid in genetic modification. Extremophiles constantly reveal adaptability, crucial for understanding life's limits and offering potential in biotechnology and astrobiology. Eyelid viewing, sometimes considered a type of hallucination, has captured the curiosity of many. There are communities where people openly share their experiences with this phenomenon. 
In these spaces, individuals describe seeing vivid images and scenes with their eyes closed. They encounter various sights, sounds, and even sensations, creating a rich inner world that feels remarkably real. Interpretations of eyelid viewing differ among people. Some see it as a form of mental exploration, a way to tap into the depths of their imagination. Others believe it provides insights into their subconscious mind, revealing hidden thoughts and emotions. Many actively engage with eyelid viewing, using techniques like meditation or lucid dreaming to enhance their experiences. They see it as an opportunity for self-discovery, creativity, and spiritual growth. While some may dismiss eyelid viewing as mere hallucinations, these communities embrace it as a fascinating aspect of human consciousness. To them, it's a journey into the mysterious realms of the mind, where imagination flourishes and new insights await. Sidonia, a region on Mars, has captured scientific and public curiosity for its unique features, including a mesa-like structure famously dubbed Face on Mars. Sidonia showcases flat-topped mesas, hills, and valleys. Situated in Mars' northern hemisphere, Sidonia lies between cratered areas to the south and smoother plains to the north. Some speculate it might have once been a coastal area, with theories suggesting the northern plains could have been ocean beds. Initial interest in Sidonia was sparked by images captured by the Viking One and Viking Two orbiters in 1976, which revealed the mysterious face on Mars. Although initially thought to be a product of lighting and shadows, subsequent missions like NASA's Mars Global Surveyor and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter provided clearer, higher resolution images of Sidonia. In the spring of 1967, an industrial mechanic and amateur geologist was prospecting for precious metals in a remote area of a Canadian provincial park when he claims to have had a close encounter with a UFO. According to his account, he was startled by two glowing, hovering objects, one of which landed nearby. Upon approaching the craft, he observed it lacked any identifying insignia and had a smooth, metallic surface that changed color and emitted a golden glow. The man claimed to have heard muffled voices coming from inside the craft and attempted to communicate with the occupants in various languages, assuming they were experiencing mechanical difficulties. As he approached the craft, he says he donned welding goggles for protection and saw flashing lights and panels inside. When he touched the craft, he found it incredibly hot, melting the tips of his gloves. According to the man's story, as he walked away, the craft rotated, and a panel with a grid of holes emitted a blast of heated gas that struck him in the chest, setting his clothing on fire and knocking him backward. He claims to have torn off the burning clothing as the craft flew away. Following the incident, the man experienced a range of physical symptoms, including burns on his chest and stomach, diarrhea, headaches, blackouts, and significant weight loss. The grid-like pattern of his burns matched his description of the craft's exhaust panel. The incident was investigated by various Canadian and American authorities, with inconclusive results. Analysis of the site yielded unusual findings, such as a circle of burned vegetation and the presence of highly radioactive elements in soil samples and the man's clothing. However, skeptics have suggested that the man's burns could have been the result of an alcohol-related accident, and that the incident may have been a hoax to deter competitors from prospecting in the area. Despite the skepticism, the incident remains one of the most well-documented UFO cases in Canadian history, and continues to fascinate those interested in the possibility of extraterrestrial encounters. Five Mice, given the playful nicknames Fee, Fi, Fo, Fum, and Fooey, made history as the first members of their species to travel to the moon. These intrepid rodents, alongside astronaut Ronald Evans, orbited the lunar surface for a record-breaking six days and four hours in the command module, while their human crewmates conducted the Apollo program's final lunar excursions. The mice were housed in a specially designed aluminum container, complete with individual compartments, a food supply, temperature control, and a system to absorb carbon dioxide and provide fresh oxygen. Their mission was part of a biological cosmic ray experiment, which aimed to study the effects of space radiation on living organisms. Tragically, one of the male mice did not survive the journey, 
and the remaining four were euthanized upon their return to Earth for further study. Despite the detection of lesions in their scalps and livers, these were not attributed to cosmic ray exposure, and no significant damage was found in their retinas, viscera, or brains. The three astronauts and their murine companions hold the distinction of being the last Earthlings to visit and orbit the moon, with Evans and the mice sharing the records for the longest time spent in lunar orbit and the most lunar orbits traveled. Feng Shui is an ancient Chinese practice that involves harmonizing individuals with their surrounding environment. The term itself means wind water, referring to the flow of energy or cosmic currents through places and structures. At its core, Feng Shui aims to situate living spaces, buildings, tombs, and other structures in optimal positions to maximize positive energy flow. This traditional belief system has its origins dating back over 3,500 years, stemming from early Chinese astronomy and cosmology. Foundational concepts include the idea of qi, an invisible life force that can be managed through proper placement and alignment. Principles like yin and yang polarity, and the five elemental forces of metal, earth, fire, water, and wood are integral to feng shui philosophy. Techniques involve analyzing landscapes, observing celestial patterns, utilizing the bagua or eight trigrams, and employing various instruments like the luopan compass. Historically, feng shui guided community planning, conflict resolution, and environmental management in rural villages. It helped allocate resources, mediate disputes over land usage, and maintain social order through its system of cosmic rules. Even today, feng shui remains culturally significant, finding modern applications in interior design, architecture, and personal well-being practices like energy balancing and harmonious living spaces. Feral children, also known as wild children, grow up isolated from human society, lacking care, language, and social norms. Often depicted in legends, they struggle with basic skills like using a toilet or walking upright due to their isolation. Learning language becomes a significant challenge, supporting the critical period hypothesis. Interest in feral children grew in the 18th and 19th centuries as science sought to understand human development. Philosophers and scientists pondered whether they represented a distinct human species, posing a dilemma for psychologists in the 20th century. Documented cases of feral children vary, with some raised by primates like monkeys and others by wolves, dogs, or even bears. These children adopt animal behaviors and find it challenging to adapt to human society upon discovery. While feral children's stories have fascinated people for centuries, some cases are debated or regarded as hoaxes, Nonetheless, studying them provides insights into the importance of human interaction and society in our development. The Fermi Paradox seeks to address the apparent absence of alien life in the universe, despite the vast number of potentially habitable planets and the presumed ease of interstellar travel given enough time. The paradox suggests that if intelligent life exists beyond Earth, it should have already visited or contacted our planet. Several factors contribute to the Fermi paradox, including the immense age and size of the universe, the relatively young age of our solar system, and the thousands of confirmed exoplanets, many of which may be capable of supporting life. However, the lack of evidence for extraterrestrial civilizations has led to numerous hypotheses attempting to explain this apparent contradiction. One possible explanation is that Earth may have developed life relatively early in the universe's history, and other habitable worlds may not yet have had sufficient time for intelligent life to evolve and spread. Alternatively, life could be more fragile than we assume, with habitable environments difficult to maintain over the long term due to various cosmic and planetary processes. Some researchers have also suggested that technologically advanced civilizations may tend to self-destruct soon after reaching a certain level of development, either through warfare or environmental catastrophe. Others propose that the most common life-bearing environments in the galaxy might be subsurface oceans on icy moons, which could limit the ability of intelligent life to explore and expand beyond their home worlds. Alien psychology and motivations could also play a role, 
with advanced civilizations potentially lacking interest in communicating with or visiting Earth. The vast distances and timescales involved in the universe may also make it unlikely for humanity to overlap in time and space with detectable alien civilizations. While there is likely no single solution to the Fermi paradox, ongoing research into exoplanets, astrobiology, and the origins of life may help narrow down the list of possible explanations. The discovery of microbial life within our solar system, for example, could suggest that the emergence of life is more common than previously thought, altering our understanding of the factors that contribute to the apparent silence of the cosmos. In the realm of physics, there are four fundamental forces that govern all interactions in nature — gravity, electromagnetism, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. Yet, some scientific theories suggest the existence of a mysterious fifth force, distinct from the known quartet. This hypothetical force, if it exists, comes in various forms with varying strengths and ranges. The quest for this elusive fifth force has intensified recently due to perplexing cosmic discoveries. First, there's dark matter, an enigmatic substance constituting most of the universe's mass. While many believe it's composed of undiscovered particles, Others speculate it could be linked to an unknown fundamental force. Second, the universe's expansion is accelerating, attributed to a phenomenon called dark energy. Some physicists theorize that quintessence, a form of dark energy, might be this elusive fifth force. Detecting a fifth force poses challenges. Just as gravity acts weakly on smaller objects, this force might be feeble, making it hard to observe. In the late 1980s, researchers reported a potential fifth force, but subsequent experiments failed to confirm it. There are three key approaches to search for the fifth force. The equivalence principle tests involve comparing it to the strong equivalence principle, a fundamental tenet of general relativity. A fifth force might manifest as deviations in solar system orbits, measured through experiments like lunar laser ranging. Another form of the fifth force arises from theories with extra dimensions, like Kaluza-Klein theory. This Yukawa force is transmitted by a light scalar field, and experiments aim to detect deviations from the inverse square law of gravity on small scales. Some experiments focus on the Earth's mantle, using geoelectrons as giant particle detectors, while others examine pulsation rates of Cepheid variable stars. Yet, despite these efforts, there's no conclusive evidence for the existence of the fifth force. In 2015, researchers proposed the existence of a new, lightweight boson called the X-17 particle, indicating a possible fifth force. Subsequent experiments provided further support for its existence, but the quest for concrete proof continues. The Fiji mermaid, a grotesque curiosity once exhibited in sideshows, was not a mythical creature at all, but rather a clever fabrication crafted from the torso and head of a juvenile monkey sewn onto the back half of a fish. This mummified amalgamation, often adorned with fish scales, animal hair, and pendulous breasts, was touted as an authentic mermaid caught near the Fiji Islands in the South Pacific. The original Fiji mermaid was acquired by an American sea captain from Japanese sailors in the early 19th century, likely one of many such specimens being manufactured in Japan at the time by fishermen, with an eye for profit and a mischievous sense of humor. The mermaid made its way to London in 1822, where it was displayed and even immortalized in an etching by artist George Cruikshank. In 1842, the renowned showman P.T. Barnum leased the Fiji mermaid from its owner and exhibited it in his American museum in New York City. Barnum, ever the master of promotion, generated publicity for the specimen by having an agent plant stories in newspapers about its supposed discovery in South America. Despite its rather gruesome appearance, described by Barnum himself as an ugly, dried-up, black-looking, diminutive specimen, the Fiji mermaid proved to be a popular attraction. Although Barnum's original Fiji mermaid disappeared, likely destroyed in one of the many fires that plagued his collections, several replicas and variations have surfaced over the years, each claiming to be the true original. These exhibits, found in sideshows and curiosity museums, have kept the legend of the Fiji mermaid alive, even as they continue to trade on the public's fascination with the strange and the macabre.